I certainly know that with Brian and Christina, they desire a godly, happy marriage. There's three ingredients that go into that type of marriage. The first being gifts. What I mean by gifts is though Christina and Brian, you're going to be given a lot of gifts today. You might get that waffle maker and the towels and the blender. But the gift that I'm speaking of as a key ingredient to a happy, godly marriage is, is not a materialistic gift. It's the non-material gift that you can give to each other. It's the gift of saying, I love you, and I am sorry. It's the gift of time, energy, dedication. It's the gift of giving the benefit of the doubt to one another. It's the gift of endurance, trust, and dedication. God, Jesus Christ, was a very good example for us in the life that he lived in giving himself and told us it is more blessed to give than to receive. But another ingredient that is very key into a godly, happy marriage is also the purpose. I know that you guys both have expressed a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because of that, we are given a command that we are to do all to the glory of God. That's our purpose. As individuals and now as a married couple, as you will do all for God's glory. So as you live life together, you grow together, that purpose is is joined together, not head-to-head -head going at each other in competition, but shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with the same goal and the same purpose. But also, last thing I think about as an ingredient of God and happy marriage is power. Brian, not power over your wife, but power is in a person. That's Jesus Christ. So the power that's going to give you endurance and strength and the ability to love and the ability to grow together, to go through high times and low times is that power you're going to find in Him. Somebody once said that a godly home that is based on God's Word could invite the angels to visit and they would find themselves right in place. Now, spending a weekend with Brian and Christina back home in Lakeland, Florida, we spent some time over some premarital counseling, had a lot of good conversations, a lot of laughter, and I know without any doubt that their desire is to have a godly Christian home. One that is full of giving himself to one another. One that is seeking so much to be side by side with one purpose and depend upon, dependent on God's power. And so because of that, it is my privilege to ask today, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother or not. Brian and Christina, today before these wonderful people who have come on this very special occasion for you, you both are going to make a personal commitment. You're going to make a personal commitment to one another. You're going to make a personal commitment to God. Now, that personal commitment is more of a spiritual commitment than it is a civil contract. A civil contract has a lot of escape clauses. But a spiritual commitment before God has no reason ever for termination. That commitment you make today is based on a choice to love and to adhere to each other, to give yourself one to the other. That personal commitment is going to be key, but it's also going to be a process. The process by which you start today as husband and wife is an exciting process. You're going to learn more about each other. You're going to take two unique personalities and join them together. And by the way, I have a thick file back home after their premarital counseling that would tell you they're very two unique personalities joining together today. And a lot of neat, neat exciting things that they will learn to grow through and to adjust. Um, Brian loves the Waffle House. And that is going to be a great sacrifice for Christina. How is he going to go through that? I don't know. He will pray for you. And so there's a lot of uniqueness in that. That's what makes it so fun is two opposites attract and come together and learn the strengths and weaknesses of one another. And so you guys are going to go through that process. Ecclesiastes 4, 9-12 puts it this way. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Woe to him that is alone when he falls. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together and they have heat, then how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So marriage is not going to be a 90-day wonder, but it is going to be a lifelong process of growing and strengthening each other. 
Marriage is also permanent. So today when you make this commitment before God and each other, it's important that you remember the seriousness by which the Heavenly Father looks at this covenant and promise of marriage. And so I charge you, Brian and Christina, that you remember that this covenant before God is not only a pledge to each other, but also a promise to God. Remember to honor the promises that you are about to make to one another today. Now you're going to learn together that the more that you fulfill the biblical roles by which God has called you to, the stronger your marriage will be, and it will be honoring to God and honoring to each other. And so I charge you, Brian, to love Christina, just as Christ gives us the example of loving the church and giving himself completely for it. And so, Brian, you promise in the presence of God, in this gathering of family and friends, to seek to be all that Christ wants you to be, to encourage your wife in her spiritual walk, to practice love as a giver more than a getter, and to dedicate your home and raising of any children that the Lord may give you to the glory of God. And do you commit your best in making every part of your life together to be pleasing and honoring to the Lord? Do you so promise? I do. And I charge you, Christina, as you begin this marriage with Brian, to be submissive and supportive, even as the church is pictured as being obedient and submissive to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so, Christina, do you promise in the presence of God and this gathering of family and friends to seek to be all that Christ wants you to be, to encourage your husband in his spiritual walk, to practice love as a giver more than a gatherer, to dedicate your home and raising of children the Lord may give you to the glory of God. And to commit your best in making every part of your life together to be pleasing and honoring to the Lord. Do you so promise? I do. Brian and Christina, you'll take hand in hand. Face to face each other. Brian, repeat after me. I, Brian, take me Christina. I, Brian, take me Christina. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. I give you my love and commitment. I give you my love and commitment. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Christina, repeat after me. I, Christina, take me, Brian. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, to cherish, and to obey. To love, to cherish, and to obey. I give you my love and commitment. I give you my love and commitment. Till death do us part.
Mine and Christina, because you have exchanged sacred vows before man and God today. Because you have given rings as a symbol of your commitment to a Christian marriage. It is my privilege to pronounce from this day forward, in the sight of God and man, you are now husband and wife. What God has joined together, don't let anyone ever pull apart. Right? You may not push your right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor that I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Brian Foger. Excited to announce our bridal party has finally arrived. We'll be introducing them and uh, they'll be standing here at the center table. You can give a round of applause with each one, however you'd like. But let's welcome, first of all, the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Chris Battle. You notice that they are much lighter. Chris is as he's walking because he doesn't have any money more anymore in his wallet. So. Mr. and Mrs. Joe Boker. And now our bridal party, Miss Kendall Robinson, escorted by Mr. Cody Martin. Miss Laura Bartow, escorted by Mr. Scott Smith. Miss Audra Battle, escorted by the Mr. Brett Battle. Mrs. Amber Battle, escorted by her husband, Mr. Michael Battle, and a little one inside. Yeah, 
Miss Leslie Boker, escorted by Mr. Thomas Boker. It's getting better and better. Here we go, Joseph. You gotta come up with something. Miss Lauren Battle, escorted by Mr. Joseph Boker. Oh yeah! Touchdown! Georgia, not Florida. Brian. Ours was the best one. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to our future bride and bridegroom. <laughs> Miss Olivia Hankey, escorted by Mr. Blake Cohen. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we all have been waiting for, would you please welcome a round of applause for Mr. and Mrs. Brian Booker! We're excited for all of them tonight in a little bit, just a few minutes, they'll have the cake cutting and then a bouquet toss, a garter toss, and then sparkler lineup outside as they head to Perry, Georgia for their honeymoon. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your meal tonight. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs>
Bye, y'all. <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> <laughs>